Okay, everybody, we're going to be learning about uh, from our uh, two-player battle game, we are going to be learning how to adjust the gun to make different kinds of guns. Uh, as we have it right now, when you press the space bar, it does some cool stuff, uh, but there's some problems with it, and we'd like to be able to change some things. So, for example, if I just press the space bar, it's just the most OP gun ever. It just shoots so fast, so we'd like to learn how to adjust the frame rate. Or sorry, the um, the rate of fire. So then we have slow firing guns and fast firing guns. Uh, also, we'd like to see if we could uh, give it sort of different behaviors, like for example, a shotgun would fire a, a spread of bullets. And maybe if we do have a rapid fire gun, instead of making it so pixel perfect accurate, maybe we could make it so that there's a bit of a, a recoil, so it's not nearly as accurate as like a sniper gun that fi fires. Uh, slower, but then um, does more damage and travels faster and that kind of stuff. So we'll take a look at building those three kinds of guns, the shotgun and the uh, sniper gun and the um, like machine gun type of thing. So as all of these changes end up happening inside of the bullet. I'm going to just make these changes in the same bullet, but eventually you probably want to make a different bullet for each gun. You will have a shotgun bullet, machine gun bullet, sniper bullet, and whatever other bullets you can imagine. But I'm just going to do all of these things inside of the script that we built last class. So I just wanted to review this script, and I think it'll be helpful. It's uh, important to remember that the bullet is sort of got two parts to it. There's the actual sprite itself, and then there's the clones that are made from this sprite. So the actual code itself that the, um, the bullet does for that sprite right is just uh, whatever is hooked up to the green flag. So really this bullet all it does is it hides um, the sprite itself. But then it serves as a factory to mass produce copies of it. And this script over here with the when I start as clone trigger, that's how the clones behave. So it's important to sort of have different uh, scripts for those two different things. And this works for all kinds of cloning. Uh, then, excuse me, <coughs> Then we are going to just take a look at how uh, this script works. And there's really three parts to it. And I'll just separate them out and we'll talk about it. So the top part here where it says, go to player one, point in direction and show. This part of your script is the initialization of the bullet. This is how it starts. And mostly these things are not gonna change too much. We're gonna see how we can change it a little bit, but for the most part, that's, um, that's gonna stay the same. We'll maybe add on a few things to point in direction. Uh, we, might, we might also change the costume as well because maybe your bullet has different costumes to display. Uh, but this is a good start. Uh, the second part here is repeat until. Uh, this is how our bullet moves. So if we want to change how it moves in terms of its speed, uh, in terms of its, um, if you want to make it steerable or bounceable or something like that then this is where uh, you would change those things. And then last but not least, this is the impact uh, part of the script. This is what happens after it collides. So the repeat until loop keeps on going until whatever conditions, in this case, touching a wall color or touching the edge of the screen, you know, whatever conditions make it stop moving, <clears throat> this is what happens after it stops moving. So right now I have this script so that it blows up a wall. So it switches to the uh, ground color, costume, and then stamps. But we can do all sorts of different things here. So it's be up to you to decide what you want to do. So that's the bullet itself. So we'll come back and see how we can modify those things. Uh, also, there's another part of the bullet, or at least the shooting code, and that's in the player itself. And this is what we have here. <clears throat> when space key pressed, create a clone. So this is where we actually make the clones. So this is where we're going to start today. We're going to modify this piece of code uh, so that we can make it so we can change how fast we shoot. So just like our movement, we're going to remove the uh, when key pressed trigger. It just doesn't really work for a lot of this video game stuff we're doing. It's kind of choppy and, and you know we can't control the rate of fire with it. So just like our movement scripts, we're going to use a forever if. I'll bring that over. And the question we're going to be asking is you know, forever if we're pressing the key that you're using for shooting. So for me, that's gonna be space key. 
so we can take a look at this slightly modified script. It's not quite done yet, but the idea is that, you know, every time you press the space, you're constantly checking to see if that's happening. And if we do, we're going to make a clone of the bullet. And then the cloning script will take over. So that's good. But uh, now we have a structure that we can actually pause or delay. And the way we do that is with a wait. So, you know, if you wanted a, you know, one second uh, delay before you shoot again, then this script would make that happen perfectly. So it makes a clone, but it waits another second before it's going to come back and check to see if you're pressing space again. And you can type in any number there, uh, whatever you think is appropriate. So if we just test it out for a second, if I press space, oh, I guess I have to <laughs> fix my code. First of all, in the bullet, let's put this back together. Uh, if I press space, then we'll see that one bullet comes out <clears throat> every second or so. And that's great. And also notice that we can steer and shoot. Before that wasn't possible. Uh, if we moved, then the key was stuck. Um, you know, we wouldn't be able to press space and move at the same time. But I'm holding down three keys right now, and it's working out pretty well. I'm not sure about what happens at Bing because the keyboards uh, are fairly basic, and there's something called keyboard ghosting, where a keyboard can only register so many um, keys down at the same time. Gaming keyboards have like fantastic, um, you know, limits on that where you can press, you know, 10, 12 keys and they all register. But the typical Dell keyboards that we have at school, you know, we'll be lucky if they do like three or four. So it'll make it a little bit hard to play uh, multiplayer games on them. But you know what? That's okay. It's just a limitation of the keyboard. And, you know, we can use uh, <laughs> gaming keyboards. I uh, have at least one at school that we can use to test stuff. Okay, so that's great. So we were able to limit the rate of fire, and now we can sort of think about what we would do for uh, making different kinds of guns. So let's start by making a shotgun. A shotgun is basically a gun that it's going to have a, a slow rate of fire like we have right now, but it's going to shoot a spread of bullets. Um, you know, was, they're not very accurate, but they are. There's a good chance you're going to hit something because they're going to set up this big line of bullets that will sort of travel at the same time. So first of all, what we can do is inside of our shooting code in the player, what we can do is instead of making one clone, we can make multiple clones. I'm not sure what number you want to have. Uh, let's just go with five for now. So I'm just gonna duplicate. I don't, I don't know if this is the most efficient way. This is the way I like to do it. Duplicate and then duplicate the duplicate. And then I end up getting five here. So let's actually make five clones of the bullet and then wait one second before we get to shoot again. Um, you can also use a repeat loop here, but the repeat loop has a, a secret delay. So it wouldn't make them all come out at the same time. So if you said repeat five, create clone of uh, player one bullet using say this, um, you know, you'd get sort of a burst fire effect. Like, uh, you know, you might actually enjoy doing that, some kind of semi or automatic weapon or something that shoots bursts. Uh, that would be a way to do it. But this is shotgun. We're going to make all those things at the same time. And if I show you this, you'll be like, oh, great, let's see the shotgun. And it still looks like one bullet. I assure you, there are five. But because they are all following the same script here, they all go to the same place and they all point in the same direction. So they're just overlapped on top of each other. So what we need to do is make them change how they start. And that's going to be, if you recall, this part of it. We're going to change not where they go, but we're going to slightly alter their direction that they face. We're still going to point <clears throat> generally in direction of player one, but we're going to add some uh, random offset to that number so that we can um, you know, have them go in different directions. So instead of just pointing straight in that direction, we'll point in that direction plus a random number. So it will be sort of relative to this direction, but will be offset. And here's my random number. I'm going to choose a number between, uh, we'll start with minus 10 and positive 10. And we'll see what that looks like. So we'll point in the direction that player one is facing, plus or minus 10 degrees in either direction. Let's see, how does that look? <clears throat> I'll press spacebar and, oh, I forgot to reconnect. <laughs> Let's try again. So now I'm going to get some space here. 
Uh, not bad. You can sort of see it spreading out a bit. Uh, and you can see it's like, it's kind of interesting effect where some of them hit earlier. Uh, but you definitely have sort of an area of effect that uh, gets uh, destroyed as your shotgun goes. And the added bonus of the shotgun is when you're really close, you know, you might get like multiple bullets hitting something. So, you know, you could do lots of damage uh, early on. Looks like you can also shoot through things where, you know, one of your bullets gets taken out, but the other ones continue through. Um, yeah, maybe I'd alter that a bit more. Like if you did like between minus uh, 180 and positive 180, uh, you know, this isn't really a shotgun anymore, but it's still a cool gun. So now you just sort of shoot um, in uh, any direction. You're just spraying bullets out wherever you go. You can't really, I guess it's sort of still relative to your direction a bit, but you know, you could have some, some fun with that. Maybe a better choice might be negative 90 and positive 90. That would be an arc uh, sort of around you. So you're shooting generally forwards, but you have zero accuracy. But hey, you're shooting five bullets, so you know maybe maybe that's still pretty good. And if you're close enough to the target, that'd be you know maybe a worthwhile uh, gun. <laughs> uh, you know you can get kind of carried away with things though if you were to you know say wait zero seconds and then and then turn that on. It's just the sprinkler of doom, and that's a pretty OP weapon. This might be an ultimate ability uh, that you eventually gain, just like sprinkler <laughs> of destruction. Uh, that you could uh, enjoy maybe a burst of you know, one second of shooting that and, and that would be fun. Bullet Storm, I think, is, is clearly the name that you need to use for that ultimate ability. I'm just going to drink in water here. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So that is one kind of gun. Um, now let's take a look at making, say, a, a rapid fire gun that has um, you know low... Um, low accuracy, I guess. Same kind of idea. We're going to leave this code in here. Maybe not minus 90. We'll go back to minus 10 and positive 10. Ooh. Not sure how that happened, but there we go. And what we'll do is, um, you know, again, we'll make this weight maybe, you know, zero point um, well, well actually I'll keep it at uh, one second but what I'll do is I'll make uh, use that repeat loop I was talking about so we can do the burst effect so now I'll make 10 bullets and they'll happen with some sort of built-in repeat because uh, sorry built-in delay because the repeat has a delay in it and then I'll wait a second before we can do another burst and the bullets will sort of be offset in terms of their direction. When I press space, I'll get this burst, and the burst can only happen every one second. So, so it's kind of like shotgun, but more of a burst fiery effect. And they're kind of going, that repeat happens so quick that they all kind of bunch up, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, if you wanted to increase the speed and make them spread out a bit more, then this would be where we go. Maybe you want to do 15. If you go too fast, you run the risk of skipping over your opponent. They actually, you know, teleport as they go. But this is sort of a little more, a little more burst fiery now, I guess. <clears throat> so there's another addition. What about making a sniper rifle? Well, a sniper rifle is really just one shot, and we can put our our script back to where we had it before. And like I said, you can. Uh, make it so that it travels faster. So we have our one shot that travels quickly. I will set it to like 20 or something. It might be getting a little bit dangerous, depending on the size of your sprites. So, you know, slow reload rate, but faster bullet. And then you could also add in some other special abilities. Uh, obviously, bullets can't pass through walls, but this doesn't have to necessarily be bullets, right? This could be some magic spell or something that you're doing. So if you wanted to make it pass through walls, uh, that's all about how it's moving. So instead of having repeat until touching pink or edge, we could just do the edge. And then we'd have, it, it's not, you know, how snipers really work. Bullets aren't suddenly becoming ghosts, but it sort of simulates the, you know, accuracy of the sniper, right? If you can shoot through a wall, uh, you know, you can't hide uh, from them. 
it's kind of up to you what you think about that. Uh, maybe I'll restart it and you can see that it will pass through all the walls. That seems pretty strong to me, but, uh, you know, what am I to say? Uh, I guess you can't use this gun to blow up walls quite as easily. You can blow them only up at the edge, so that's maybe a disadvantage to balance the weapon out. And then there's just other fun things you can do. Let's put uh, let's put this back in. And instead of moving so quickly, we could move slowly. We have a very slow bullet, and we could make it so that uh, you guide the bullet as it uh, flies along. So what we can do is just take this point in direction script and I'll just rip it out. Whoosh. Uh, we I don't know if you want randomness or not in there. I think you might just want to be able to steer it so, you know, as much as you want. And then if we're pointing in direction while we're moving, then you know, as you change your your character's way it's facing, you'll also change the direction of the bullet. So an example would be like this, where so you can shoot and I can steer the bullet. Whoop. And kind of curve shot it like that terrible movie with Angelina Jolie. I forget what it was where they could like spin their guns around and somehow it like would make the bullet curve. It was, it was quite the travesty of movies. Uh, <laughs> I definitely don't recommend it. Uh, so yeah, this could be a, a fun additional weapon. It sort of seems powerful because you could um, you know hunt down your opponent without you know leaving the safety of your uh, space. But at the same time, you can't really move too effectively. You can shoot and then like walk with your bullet, I guess, and then pause and then let it go. That, that's kind of a fun thing uh, you could do. It's sort of up to you how you want to uh, make that happen. And of course, you know, we don't have any rapid fire going on with this gun, but imagine you did. You could like gather up a whole bullet, um, you know, train as you're moving and uh, it could be kind of fun. And you can adjust that, maybe make it, if it moves faster, it's more skill-based, you know, you can kind of play with that. You know, last but not least, we haven't really talked about how we can alter the last part of this uh, script. I don't have a lot of uh, pretty things to show you to make it happen, but you can make a whole range of costume effects happen. So you can make a little explosion and, and have some cool special effects. I, I don't know, hazard to make a, a very basic little explosion here. Let's, uh... Let's use orange or something and just draw some lines here. Da, da, da. I've seen enough comic books to know what a basic uh, explosion looks like. So I'll try not to spend too much oops, too much time on that. There's, ugh, it's not great. It's not bad. Oh, yeah, let me move this a little. That's okay. <laughs> uh, and then maybe some red in the center. Whoosh. This is, this is my best uh, try at explosions here. I'm sure you guys will come up with something more beautiful. Uh, you know, a great thing to do is just download a picture of an explosion. I highly recommend it, unless you're like, you know, great at art. Let's put a little uh, orange center, I don't know why. There we go. Poof, there's my explosion costume. Uh, so what I can do is I can switch to my explosion costume before I move on to anything else. So here is uh, me switching to an explosion costume. Just It's called Costume 3, awkwardly. Uh, I should probably name that Explosion. And then maybe I'd like it to do some effects. Um, I could make it spin, I could make it grow, I could change the size. It's sort of up to you. I'll just uh, do, I'll just do a loop where I change uh, ghost effect and I change pixelate as well. So here's pixelate, uh, and I'll change them. I guess I'll ghost it to invisible. So I'll ghost it uh, by five, and I guess I'll ghost pixelate by five. And I'll make a repeat loop to make that happen 20 times to add up to 100. And then I'll reset all the effects, and then stamp after it. So I'll clear graphic effects, and then switch to the purple costume. So now I have a lot more elaborate ending script, right? I'm going to switch to the little explosion I drew. I'm going to do some effects to make it look like it's exploding. And then I'm going to clear those away and then stamp this. Uh, the stamp, maybe maybe the stamp should come first now that I think of it. Because the hole should be there already. <laughs> uh, but you can experiment with different ordering of things. So I'll put the the stamping and exploding and then, then the costume change. So let's see. That might not be the best choice. So now I'll go ahead and shoot. Oh, oh, there's a problem there, though. 
<laughs> I guess when I shoot, I have to make sure I... Although that could be cool, like a cool buzzsaw thing you're shooting. I guess I could see that as being an interesting choice. Uh, I think I'll probably go and uh, reset the costume to be the correct costume that we start with. So in the bullet, that's something I'm going to add to my initialization script. So I'm going to make sure I've got my right, the right costume for the job when I start off. So I'll start it at costume. And a lot of graphical improvements can be done to my project, and you know, I'm hoping you're thinking about those as you go along. So now I can shoot just a regular red bullet, and then it turns into a bit of an explosion. <coughs> Which looks alright. I think it could probably be better, um, but it, it's, a, it's a start. And you know, think about how you can have multiple costumes for that explosion that are changing as opposed to just a single one. Uh, the explosion could have like a large radius of damage, possibly, so that you could take uh, you know area effect damage when it when it hits. Maybe it's a big red circle around it, and your uh, players are you know allergic to red; they take damage from from red. Anyways, there's some ideas for guns. There's so many other possibilities, uh, especially if you're not doing guns. If you're doing magic or you know, friendship uh, blasting. I'm not sure exactly what you're, you're sending across, but, you know, there's so many different tropes and things. And you guys probably know more than I do about that. So I'm going to let you play around with uh, different types of guns. Remember, ultimately, uh, I did all mine in one uh, sprite, but you probably want to build multiple sprites for the different types of guns. And then later on, we'll take a look at how we can sort of select which gun we shoot when we press the space bar. All right, thanks, everybody.